we'll start with Amit. Uh, Amit is co-founder of uh, CEO of Yulu. Yulu's vision is to reduce traffic congestion by providing a scalable, affordable, efficient, and clean solutions for the first mile, last mile, and the short distance company. He strongly believes that short commute mode can be made more efficient, affordable, and green, thereby ensuring the future generations will have a healthy environmental view. He wants to replace big personal vehicles with smaller factor that does not require fossil fuel. Amit is a serial entrepreneur, very experienced, he's also the co-founder of Inmobi. Thank you, Amit, for joining this panel. We've been founder in the last few years, and their vision for the next five years, I would say, which is 2025. What do they see the landscape being, and from their point of view, how does the EV market evolve in the next five years? Uh, let me start with uh, Amit, because Yulu is doing something on the passenger mobility, and all of you will probably see what is happening when you try to do the Yulu bike. So I will let him start. Amit, over to Thank you, Ravi. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. So our journey started in January 2018 uh, from bicycles, where we put an IoT hardware and made bicycles, smart bicycles, and uh, because our mobility options are very limited in the city, people started using it. But very soon we realized that uh, those bicycles are good for one to two kilometers only, and our city needs something which is more five to six kilometers in terms of range. And the idea was to figure out a low price solution. We looked at petrol uh, driven scooters, easy one, uh, but we thought that probably we are gonna shift one problem to another. Uh, not good. Second thing is uh, economically or financially that business model we thought will be made difficult to scale. And why we talking about EV right now? Not because we are worried about at moment we are, but actually the true driver of EV adoption is happening because it is now financially viable. It is financially better than the gas driven economy. That's why across the globe you look at energy companies, uh, gas companies, they are all basically thinking about uh, EV as a frontline strategy for their future. And we were no different, uh, and when we started thinking about it, a lot of challenges came into mind. Uh, first, first thing was how do you charge it, how do you manufacture a vehicle uh, for shared mobility, etc. And we took all of these things uh, uh, on us. We thought that uh, we can always wait for the company to come up with some specification, come up with infrastructure for charging, or manufacturers in India will help us with something. Uh, unfortunately, it did not happen. It was a chicken and egg. Everyone was looking for some kind of commitment. And when we did not ourselves know that what we need, how can we ask them that make this? With this, uh, our journey started in uh, March of this year, where we launched this new uh, EV called Yulu Miracle, which is a vehicle designed for shared mobility. and. Uh, takes one person at a time, it's a very small form factor and because of that the battery requirement, the motor requirement is also very low. So the 6 kilogram battery lithium ion swappable and we are running in a you know, neighborhood where there are specific neighborhoods in Bangalore right now so we don't have to worry about range anxiety. We have set up our own charging stations at mom and pop stores where my own team is able to pick up the battery uh, and they're able to locate on their app which is scooter requires swapping to be done because of the IoT and GPS technology. So in a short period of time, we have completed close to 15 million kilometers on EV. So we are the largest in the country with a fleet of 3,000 vehicles on the road uh, and have been clocking uh, a lot of mileage, a lot of uses in that. One of the big learning we had was that uh, uh, by this whole thing looked very complicated, but when you focus your energy in certain geography or certain neighborhood, then the strategy starts to make sense. And I'm sure that Sapna will also talk about the same thing, why they chose Bangalore and now Chennai. So they're not doing bad India on day one. They were very clear it is a city strategy. And for us, it's actually a pin code strategy which has helped us in making things happen. And at least our vision is that our big cities of India should have a robust public transportation, namely metro and bus system, and Yulu becomes the feeder service uh, in the form of first mile and the last mile, and we make our cities much more livable and sustainable, and we want to play in that particular arena. Thank you, Amit. How many of you have used Yulu bike? It's a blue bicycle and to get a lot of people in the audience who have already used Yulu, so good to hear. But the vehicles have been started uh, being used by Zomato people 
and there are people who are now using it for small size delivery. As you know, with the rise of e-commerce, uh, people are not going and shopping and eating. Uh, they are basically relying on someone else to deliver that. And because of that, uh, the earlier logistics which used to be on truck and then we have Tata Ace, now we're talking about small size two meters becoming actually the mainstream for hyper local logistics. And as I said in the, in, in, in the beginning also, that it is not about the again environment, not, not for the heck of it. But it is commercially and financially better solution. One of the challenge with anything which is gas for petrol driven, there will be a lot of pilferage, effect of traffic congestion on the mileage. Uh, there's so many challenges uh, in terms of maintenance of the vehicle. And when you move to electric mobility, all of that thing is gone. Imagine these vehicles are also smart. Now you can never have a person who will say, oh, I really went to MG Road, but actually he did not. Uh, now because you can see that this vehicle was actually, uh, did, did it go to MG Road or not, whether it is a job or not, everything is connected. So there's a lot of accountability also getting built in. And if you look at the countries like China, where they have made e-commerce delivery mandatory on EV, uh, so they have a very clear path. And I think in India, with this financial uh, uh, goodness of this vehicle and some policy intervention, we will see that you know this uh, whole segment will get electrified much earlier than most of the uh, most of the other segments. Amazon, uh, Flipkart, and you name all of the big companies, they have big plans to go electric. And I see no reason for this thing to not happen. And they will be able to control the design, they will have their own setup for charging, repair, maintenance, working with, you know, OEMs like uh, even uh, Nagish's company and a couple of more companies are working actively. So I believe in next two to three years, we will see ourselves how quickly this adoption has happened. And uh, it is just on the back of, backbone of the goodness of all of the things and companies I spoke about. Yeah, just to add uh, to what uh, Amit uh, just said, I think some of this obviously also is a responsibility on us. As and the data you get now, like the OEMs, you have a lot more business value of it because your fleet can be optimized. So you got take on it and how are you looking at this? So we are a mobility as a service company powered by technology. And while uh, each one of us here AI, ML, uh, casually these days, but if you look at it, if you have to do anything with AI and machine learning, you need a very high quality data at large quantity. And because of IoT, the vehicle, its maintenance and all of the strength which is required from a mechanical engineering, electronic engineering, mechatronics, you name it, everything is taken care of. But what sets us apart, because we are running mobility as a service, we require a lot of data so that we can ensure our vehicles are present at the right time at the right location. And how do we do that? We look at the historical trend, where the demand was originating, supply was there, and we are able to predict a very, very high accurate picture of our demand and supply. And sometimes you do have packets and patches where there's a supply but there's no demand and vice versa. And we move the vehicles physically. So close to 15% of our vehicles get moved every day to manage this demand and supply. Other interesting thing is from a data perspective, I was telling you that we are collecting close to 5 million data points every day. So imagine the quantity and the quantum of data which comes to our server and what we do with that. So this is a real use case of technology and uh, for us AI is not a buzzword. It's actually a way of life, the way we run our fleet. And we believe that you apply a lot of interesting data sciences and algorithms to improve the availability and customer satisfaction. And that's what we are able to do at, at our level. And I, I can imagine that when we scale up the business, because it is technology powered, we will not have so much of problem in building the business from, from here. Yeah, so